Well, it's been a little while since we've done much with graphing, so we're going to jump back to that. Oops. I think we're going to jump back to that. There we go. Uh, we can use graphs to look at the, uh, the impulse on an object or the change in momentum on an object since those are equivalent. If we have a graph of force versus time, this is uh, going to allow us to, to make that calculation. Now the calculation we've dealt with so far, force times time equals mass times change in velocity, uh, we just have to use the average force uh, in that case. But we understand that you know forces may change uh, over time, and maybe not in a way that's real easy to calculate the average for. So if we have a graph like this one, um, we can find the, the overall impulse just by doing the area underneath this curve, or the integral of this force versus uh, force as a function of time uh, function. So I'm going to divide this shape up into easy to uh, to calculate shapes, um, e easy to calculate the area for. So rectangles and triangles for the most part. Um, so this one triangle, I'll have one half times. 4 seconds times 20 newtons. So that's going to be equal to 40. And then the units there are newton seconds. This one is going to be 2 seconds uh, wide by 20 seconds, or sorry, 20 newtons tall, which is 40 newton seconds. And then this one is going to be one half times two seconds wide times twenty seconds tall or twenty newtons tall. So this one's gonna be twenty newton seconds. So my impulse then J is gonna be forty plus forty plus twenty newton seconds or J is equal to a hundred newton seconds. Now the units there may seem a little strange. We haven't dealt with newton seconds before, um, but let me show you something like that. Newtons times seconds. Uh, remember that newton is just an abbreviation for kilogram meter per second squared. Remember, because uh, force, net force, is equal to mass times acceleration. So we've got mass in kilograms, acceleration in meters per second squared. Uh, so a kilogram meters per second squared times seconds. So we'll have one factor of seconds cancel out, and this is just going to be kilogram meters per second. And that is the unit we're used to seeing with momentum, which makes sense because this impulse number here, J, has to be equal to the change in momentum. So it should have the same units. So I might write this as 100 kilogram meters per second. Now from here I might be given information about the mass of the object and say a starting velocity and ask for to find the final velocity and that's what we did in the previous problem.